So we're sitting here with Andrew LaDuff, Grand Marshal. Best Grand Marshal we've ever had in our band. What's your date of birth? I should have asked you that first. My date of birth? Yeah. January 3rd, 1964. You came from a, a musical family. You had kin folks that were musicians. Who was they? Uh, I started out uh, with Bernal, Bernal Brunius. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. who brought me on as Grand Marshal. A couple of gigs he couldn't make, and he asked me what I want to do it. I love to dance. Yeah, I say, yeah. let's do it. And uh, then I have my uncle I play with occasionally, Wanda Brunius. And I have a cousin, Mark Bro. play with him. So it's a musical family that I'm with. Well, did you know John? Yeah. yeah John, John Jr., not Pickett. Yeah, that's my godfather. Oh, okay. Did you know Pickett? Yeah, that's my grandfather. Pickett is your grandfather. Yes, sir. That's just, man. What a family. I mean, I still ain't straight. I know I'm old. I mean, uh, the funny thing was, you knew Pickett's wife. That's my grandmother. Okay. Chinese. Her real name was Nazimova. <laughs> Nazimova <laughs> Brunis. What was the name of your parents? My parents was Brunetta and I'm named after my dad, Andrew yeah. Leduff. What did they do? Uh, my mother, she was pretty much uh, like cooking and, yeah, yeah. you know, a stay-at-home yeah. mom. Yeah. She taught me all the cooking and the whole family. My brothers and sisters taught all of us how to cook. How many brothers and sisters you got? I have one brother, Hillary, and yeah. I have three sisters, Annette, Sandy, and Patrice. Okay. But, um, and then so... How did you come to get interested in the Grand Marshal and stuff? I mean, what did drew you to that? Uh, well, this is New Orleans, and everybody's always dancing and second lining. Yeah. And when Burnell asked me to fill in for him, I said, let's do it. And once I started with him, that's where I just kept on getting more and more gigs here and there, yeah. and I enjoy it. But Burnell, um, he was a trumpet player, bass drum player, right. the Grand Marshal, and I've heard him play snare drum. That's right. You know. Mm -hmm. What did he want to do all them things for? He just... Being in a musical family, he just picked up on each one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did you first become aware of Grand Marshals and what they were doing and what they were... Uh, just talking with uh, Wendell, Brunius, and Bernal, and they filling me different things, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, because Grand Marshal, in my understanding is, it started many, many years ago. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was the military or just where it started exactly. But uh, when it started, you know, just my understanding is the Grand Marshal, their job would be to lead the band, to pick out what route we're going to go. Mm -hmm. And many years ago, uh, musicians, the band used to read a lot of music. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if they read music and they have the sheet in front of them, a lot of times they can't see that there's a hole in the ground, there's, you're about to step in something, or, you know, there's a trip hazard. So as my job, I would inform them, hey, right? I'll give them my blow my whistle or some type of signal to look down. So they well, they, all the old time grand marshals, I mean, I'm talking about the ones like Fat Houston, uh, uh, Noon Johnson, uh, all of them kind of things. Um, they had a system whereby they always had a whistle. Mm -hmm. and if you blew two blasts, boo boo, it meant watch out, there's a hole in the ground. Right. If one long blast, boop, meant catch up, come mm -hmm. on, catch up, you're lagging behind, you know. Right. And the band, and then they would march, the snare drum player would march them when they broke time. Uh, I mean, obviously in a funeral march, but mm -hmm. the snare drum player would pick up the beat and they'd march a little faster than when they played. And then he would pull it down. How old were you when you did your first Grand Marshal job? Uh, maybe early 20s. Come you never took up an instrument and just wanted to be a Grand Marshal? I don't know. Just, just a lot of, just, I guess, busy here and there and uh, going to school and find, trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I just never really picked it up. I always followed my mom and I was always in the kitchen. Yeah. I love yeah. cooking. So <laughs> I always say if you 
love doing something, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah, that's what it looks be. How about Lady Grand Marshals? What you know about them? Who was the uh, first one you saw? Ooh, I think, uh, what was her name? I think her name was, was it Eleanor? Um, I think, the, yeah, Eleanor Tatum. That yeah. was the first one I knew of. Mm -hmm. The first one I ever known or experienced uh, seeing her dance and perform. Yeah, it's funny the history of Grand Marshals. I mean, uh, years ago, when they had parades, they would have the Grand Marshal in the front and the band, mm -hmm. and then they would have what they called the Ladies of the Auxiliary. They were all dressed in white, white mm -hmm. military jackets and little white hats and white skirts. White stockings, everything, all in white. Maybe sometimes 20 of them. Then would come another gang of Grand Marshals, maybe five or six Grand Marshals would come. Now, they don't have that. They've just got one Grand Marshal, and that's it, you know. Right. But, um, yeah, the whole thing has changed so much. Um, and of course, the musicians, they used to play for music on the street, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you play with our bands, the society bands. Correct. Could you dance your stuff to a 6-8 march? I can. I just have to slow it down and I keep up with the beat. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But very seldom I always tell you sit down and rest. Right, you know? yeah. But in the old days, the grand marshals, if they played a 6-8, they would just walk along. They wouldn't dance. Mm -hmm. They'd just walk along because it was hard for them to get with that beat. That's six, eight feet is, and two fours, too, you know. Mm -hmm. But bands like the Eureka Band, the Young Tuxedo, they always read music, you know. So who, who taught you how to do what you do? Or did you just watch Burnell and... I watched Burnell. He taught me a lot of things. When, you know, you listen to the music, you listen to the beat, when to blow the whistle, when not to blow the whistle, things like that. And you look at his steps, and then from there, I just take it from there and create my own steps. I was going to say, you got all your own things. Mm -hmm. How much is a grand marshal in charge of a parade? I think it's, it's significant because if they, they need to know the route, because the whole band is not going to know the route. Yeah. And like I said earlier, to keep an eye on the whole wind New Orleans. There's a pothole yeah. every, yeah. you know, a million potholes. Yeah. So make sure nobody don't step in it because when they're playing or their heads up, they're not looking down. So in between that, I'm dancing and because I never know, you know, what, what dance I'm going to do. Yeah. When I get out there, it's always different. Yeah. I might get out there and move and slide this way or step yeah. this way yeah, or, yeah. you know, it's it just whatever I feel. I might jump, I might hop, you know. What's the tradition with the umbrella? Uh, again, uh, many years ago, it's just, really, you out there, it's hot yeah, to yeah. keep the sun off your head. And after, as the years went by, they started getting fancier and fancier and fancier. Yeah. And, um, you know, and now everybody have their own. All umbrellas I have, I make my own umbrella. And I just design it to whether it's the sash that I wear, the colors. I'll put feathers on it. There's some people put birds on it, beads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a number of things. I remember a long time ago. <clears throat> I'm telling you things, but I shouldn't be. But I just want to get it in the interview. When they would play the funeral, until they turned the body loose, the grand marshal would always reverse the sash, so the sash said nothing. Mm -hmm. Society Brass Band was on the inside where his chest was. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as they turned the body loose, and he'd do that. It was a solemn moment because the umbrella's closed. You, you yeah, don't yeah. have your hat on your head, and you just have your sash on. And then once the body's in the grave, that's when the second line starts. Then you can put your hat on, blow your whistle, open your umbrella. Do somebody tell you always when it's time to do that, or do you have to just guess it? No. I mean, after you start doing it and watching Burnell so long, I watch yeah. everything when he start, you know, and then uh, whenever the band start, and that's when I know what to do. You think the 
brass band tradition has changed? It's starting to change a little. You know, they got a lot of these youngsters coming out, and they, they, you know, some of it just a lot of noise. You know, it's a lot of people. A lot of people can't even read music anymore. Oh no. You know. Yeah. We should talk a bit about women grand marshals, because there's been not that many, but mm -hmm. well, first, I don't know whether you even know this. Harold Dejan told me when I interviewed him, the first woman they ever. Um, buried with a band of music it was named Mrs. Cole and it was way back in the 20s Harold said and Manuel Perez he was a little boy and he must have gone to see it Manuel Perez was playing the trumpet and King, uh, King Oliver was playing the trumpet mm -hmm. and uh, that was the first woman they ever I wonder why they never buried women with music I don't know I mean it's weird isn't it yeah I mean uh, but then, Harold said there was another lady who got in the 30s buried with music. And then the next one, and there's only three Harold could remember in his life, man. Mm -hmm. It was 1963. And uh, the first lady's name I told you was called Mrs. Cole. And then Mama Johnson was the name of the one that Harold buried in 63. Mm -hmm. What that, can you demonstrate a couple of, if we put on some music, can you uh, demonstrate a couple of dance steps you do? Sure, no problem. Okay. Grand Marshal knows what he's doing. Andrew Bluff, he's uh, he knows what he's doing. So you blow the whistles. You blow one one whistle <laughs> means get ready. Then <laughs> get lined up. You know and so forth. And uh, like the Grand Marshal job to point out potholes when you're walking. He blow his whistle <laughs> and then there's a Trump wants to point back at it so he don't fall down the hole or fall over. I mean, uh, but the Grand Marshal got a, his job's all worked out if he knows what he's doing. But see, they had women Grand Marshals 
in the late 60s. I think the first one I ever saw was Eleanor Tatum. And the Grand Marshal's hats, would they wear the hat the whole procession? Well, no, not necessarily. Sometimes. You see, you had... First would come the band, and then you had the, the gentlemen of the auxiliary. And they had hats like um, his name, Marcus Garvey. They had the Marcus Garvey hats, see? And uh, then come the ladies of the auxiliary. They was all dressed in white. And the men and the women never marched together. The men marched first, and then the ladies of the auxiliary. And then whatever rag tag and bobtail bunch come back of that, you know. But uh, but like I say, they never had any women grand marshals. I remember. Well, I told you they didn't even bury a woman with music until about 1964, you know. And so uh, everything was done according to a tradition that started years before I ever got here. I mean, uh, but those musicians knew what to do. What do you think? You got any ambitions as a Grand Marshal? Uh, just keep making everybody smile, make everybody happy. <laughs> <laughs>